Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ramadan Radio, Wolverhampton. You are tuned in to Alvina Ali and it's in conversation with. This is where we are doing an intimate interview with prominent people from various walks of life connected in the community. Now, in conversation with, we'll share stories and insights from the guest where they will talk about their personal life, family, career, and more with myself and Yusuf Shafi as well. Now, local councillors are elected by the community to decide how the council should carry out its various activities. Now, they represent public interest as well as individuals living within the ward uh, in which he or she has been elected to serve a term of office. Now, my two guests... um, tonight have regular contact with the general public um, through council meetings, could be telephone calls, it could be their own surgeries. And surgeries often provide an opportunity for any ward resident to go and talk to their councillor face to face. And these take place on a regular basis. So joining me today in conversation with is also my co-host uh, Yusuf Shafi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And also St Peter's Ward, we've got Councillor Abeda Ahmed and our Labour candidate um, Gessa Razim. Assalamu alaikum, brother and sister. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Don't forget to speak. How are you both? <laughs> how how are you both? I'm very well, thank you. Jazakallah for welcoming back to the radio station. I hope everyone's good today. Thank you very much, Zakala, for inviting me. Uh, it's been honoured to be in this studi- studio with yourselves and uh, Councillor Rebeza and Brother Yusuf Shafi. Lovely. So I'm um, all well, all fine. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I was slightly worried my mic wasn't working then, but uh, m- may have to speak slightly louder. Inshallah, we'll be okay. So, alhamdulillah, um, do you want me to press ahead? Yes, Alina? yes, shall why I, not? Shall I carry on? Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, listeners, so we are blessed with having our Labour Councillor, Councillor Obeda with us today, and uh, Brother Azim uh, as well, Brother Gesser Azim, yes. Gesser Azim um, who is our prospective Labour candidate for St. Peter's Ward. We had the privilege of having Zaid Shah on last week, and he's the prospective Conservative candidate. So it's only fair we thought we should give an opportunity to Gesser as well, uh, so that we can really find out who Gesser is, a little bit more about his life, what his hobbies, interests are, how he has been active in the communities, his key involvements, and uh, what he gets up to. So, welcome to Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been an honour th- to be present in Ramadan Radio, Brother uh, uh, Yusuf Shafi. Um, I've, I've seen r- what Ramadan Radio has been doing for the last uh, couple of weeks, and uh, first of all, I'd like to con- congratulate uh, the all the management of Ramadan Radio. Uh, it's been an honour to be present here. Uh, I look forward to speaking to yourself. Excellent. That's that that's that's really it's really good to know that you are listening and that uh, you're one of our avid fans. That's Thank you that's very much. <laughs> so, in essence, St. Peter's Ward is a, a ward which we know has got a number of issues, a number of concerns, and uh, you're interested in becoming our Labour counsel- Councillor for St. Peter's. Um, how many years have you been in St. Peter's yourself, and w- what's your view of the ward? Um, I'm a resident of St. Peter's Ward um, from a very young age, I believe about three years when we moved into St. Peter's Ward. Uh, since then, uh, it my initial education is in boarding school, uh, and I think that's probably one of the best times that, looking back, it was uh, some of the th- things that I learned. What was that local in Wolverhampton? Uh, no, it was uh, abroad in Pakistan. Okay, right. Okay. Um, my family was based here, and uh, I had the privilege just to be sent back to Pakistan mm-hmm. in a boarding school. Uh, and they were quite strict at the time, but I think some of the things that I've learned during that time, uh, they're helping me in my today's life. And, um, and and it's been one of the greatest times I've spent there. So apart from those six, seven years, I've been living in St. Peter's and uh, grown up in, in the community and been part of this community. Excellent, excellent. And, I, and I'm aware that you're working in the IT industry. You're uh, uh, an engineer, are you in, in yes, IT? Yes, um, I've done uh, my college years in um, Wolfram College, and then it's been changed to... Well, Wolverhampton College now. Mm-hmm. But, um, I've done my A levels in Wolfram College, and then further moved on uh, my undergraduation from Birmingham University in electronics, uh, and then my I did my masters in advanced technology management from Wolverhampton University. Excellent, so good. That's my 
education background. So, so the, the world is moving towards computers and artificial intelligence and all of these things. So you're a man who knows all about these things, which, <laughs> is, which is good to know. Good to know that we'll have our counsellors who can maybe mm -hmm. create little robots who will go and do all the work that's required in the yeah. Civic Centre. Talking about robots, one of the more projects was on robots. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we've got the so we've, got it, we've, we've got the expert. We'll, we'll be okay, <laughs> inshallah. We'll be okay. Okay. Um, St. Peter's Ward is a uh, alhamdulillah the ward where most of which uh, Wolverhampton's Muslims uh, live, and um, alhamdulillah we've got a lot of masajid there. But there's a lot of sense of community within St. Peter's. Um, at the same time, of course, it is affected with a number of socio-economic indicators which are quite low. Education attainment is quite low. There's issues of crime, issues of drugs. Um, the housing stock isn't as good as it could be. Um, for a new councillor coming into St. Peter's and trying to make improvements and trying to actually develop the ward, there's a big challenge. Um, how would you want to, to work with that challenge? Yeah, <coughs> if I can just talk about uh, one of the reports uh, from uh, Wurundjeri City Council, I think if you look at a glance, uh, uh, it shows you the how deprived this ward is uh, on the some of the deprivation levels. And um, uh, so I think the problems are there, uh, and we need to find out what the solutions we, we can work towards. Um, especially I've, I've had um, opportunity to work with some of the youth uh, during my couple of years. Um, I've been involved in, uh, in, uh, with community work in, in our um, community centre. And uh, really it shows, it opens your eyes when you interact with some of the young people of today and you see th some of the problems that you face. Because I had the privilege uh, of um, being raised in this community and I think uh, what I've learned is um, uh, we had the support at the time, uh, be our elders, be our, our teachers, or our support from our government in a sense. But um, some of the things that we, we had the opportunity, I, I don't feel that uh, we ha the young people of today have the same sort of opportunities. And because of that, there, there are a lot of problems within the community. And I think here where you need to build those relationships with, with those young people and listen to them and empower them and to basically find out wh what exactly uh, the problems are and how we can tackle them. And I think there the councillors can come into it and basically play a role into it. I think our community needs to play a big part into that, where we can learn what are the issues and how our council uh, can work with the community to basically try to solve those problems. Okay, so so what you're saying really is that the, there's a lot of problems in, this in the yeah. community, but at the same time the solutions exist within the community as well. Yeah. And it's just about galvanizing that talent, getting yeah. people together and getting them to focus on their needs and their yeah. priorities and through that being able to actually get change to occur. Yeah. Um, and it's good that you've been working with youth because I often feel it is the youth who will make the difference. Uh, yeah. They have the energy and the time and, the, and it is their future as well. So therefore the, they've got the investment to be made. Um, besides working with the youth within the community centre, um, how have you found engaging with youth within the mosques or within generally around the streets and neighbourhoods? Uh, how, how do you find that uh, as a strategy and, yeah. and what do you think needs to be done more towards that? Yeah, I think exactly um, all these places. I mean, you, you uh, community centres are one place, and uh, another. I mean, our mosque can play a bigger role into this because we uh, we have space there, and our community basically gathers in these community centres or uh, or places of worship. So basically, we need to build that relationship. Um, I can give an example of one of the mosques. Basically, they took an initiative where. Uh, so they provide is a space where they can young people can come there and uh, participate in some of the sports activities. And during that time, uh, when the prayer time comes, they were called back in 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 the mosque to pray. So I think once you build that relationship with young people, you need you will understand what the problems are uh, on the education side. Because uh, one of the indicators I was looking through uh, in St. Peter's, especially 16 to 17 years. Uh, on education, on, on, on the trading level, those were some of the figures that which were not really good. And I think so we need so to in, in, in essence, what you're saying is the kids are leaving school at 16 yeah. and not necessarily going on off to college or staying on at sixth form or not getting involved in an apprenticeship or some, some type of further education. Um, 
what what do you think can be done then through the masajid or through the local organisations to enable to actually to support those children to carry mm. on and not give up at 16? And what do you think the barriers are? Is it is it the drugs culture? Mm. Is it the crimes culture? Is it, is it the issues around the need for them to go out and work and earn money so that further education is is therefore not an option for them? I, th uh, I believe, uh, first of all, we need to provide them a space because we... I don't believe we need to uh, put a label on them and, and, and in a sense, um, uh, say that these are the problems. Basically, we need to work with the, with the young people and give them a space and listen to them. That's one of the main, uh, main things that you need to listen to them and see what exactly the problems they come back with. Some of the things are obvious. We can see uh, what are the issues they have and we can, uh, from a, a council perspective, we can take it back to the council and see what support can council provide in, in those circumstances. Uh, but it's, it's, it's both ways in a sense. And, and another aspect is I think um, uh, parents can pr um, provide their role into earlier on, on not y because you don't need to be waiting till 16 or 17 years. It's from the early age you need to build a relationship with your children so that if there's any problems they can discuss because a lot of times uh, young people are not comfortable sharing those experiences, what problems they are facing. So uh, we need to build that relationship and and be more active, proactive. Of course, of course. And, and in uh, essence, I suppose what you're saying is that, uh, I mean, of course, councillors are very important people and influential people in civic society, but it is also the people themselves who need to get involved in civic society and, and stand up and be counted and make things better for themselves. Yeah. Uh, and encourage those young people especially to get more involved in community service, get involved mm. in community activities, in youth work, etc. Mm. Uh, and through that, develop each other mm. to, to promote their, their needs and promote their, their issues. Um, okay, I've touched on a few issues around education and I've mentioned crime, etc. Uh, are there any particular concerns or issues that you have beyond these that you think when you become a councillor, if you become a councillor, if the people of St. Peter's uh, were to elect you, that you'd want to focus on and work towards? Yeah, I think one of the main things, uh, especially education, uh, as you've, you've seen for the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, you yourself, uh, members from the community have been coming here and talking about education. There are a lot of talent in within our community, but we need to tap into that talent and basically work with, with the talent, with, with our elders, and, um, and take you know the experience that they already gained and how we can uh, bring uh, if, if there's a need of a school if that sort of thing if, if it's possible so so basically bringing the community together I think okay. uh, one of the things that Ramzan Radio is doing they're providing this platform where everyone can come and and we can see the talent uh, in front of us but it's just galvanizing that uh, uh, that that talent together and so so basically uh, working with with the community uh, so I think once you're part of that community, y you'll see the problems coming uh, in front of you. So you can work uh, with the community to basically s um, uh, try to sort them out and try to work with the community in a sense. Uh, Okie dokie. Okay, right. let's, let's get to know about Gasser Azim a bit more as well. Tell us about your hobbies and interests. What would you do on a weekend? I mean, assuming COVID-19 wasn't happening or, uh, you know, how, how do you occupy your free time? Uh <coughs> I think so, um, uh, over the years <laughs> we had some of the, mm, our friendships. Um, uh, before all this happened, that we launched our campaign and we were quite busy into that campaign, uh, keeping our professional career on the side and uh, meetings and you know the community interaction that we have. But um, apart from at the moment, uh, obviously nothing much is happening. So it's uh, I'm quite interested into our history, looking back into. Uh, basically learning about um, the Quran itself and then uh, over the years, you know, the Islamic history and uh, some of the aspects of that in, in that sense, some of the programs they we can find through maybe Netflix or other platforms Masha so you so can you tap so into them. So you like to do reading, you're, you're interested in doing a fair bit of reading in your private time. Yeah. yeah. That's good, that's good. And uh, any sports, outdoor activities or... Are you like me, fairly lazy and like to watch the <laughs> telly? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm quite I'm, I'm, I'm always in front of the telly. Uh, News 24. Or sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> or sleeping, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, we had um, from very young age some of the sports that we used to in badminton, uh, quite interesting. Into and obviously we don't have much time at the moment, but whatever time we get, it's it's try try to take part in these sports and. Good, excellent. Right, um, I think I want to open up the discussion now a little bit because we've, we've yeah. got to learn a little bit about you. So, uh, listeners, you're listening to Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton, 87.9 FM. Uh, we now want to bring in Councillor Obeda as well. Hello and welcome. Assalamu alaikum, sister. How are you? Alaikum salam. I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. And now feel free, Gasser, to please join in. You know, okay. this is this is not an interview of uh, okay. Councillor Obeda in any way. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> feel free. And, and yourself as well, Avina. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you've got some lots of interesting questions which, which you want to ask yes. our guests and, mm. and make observations and all of us. Yeah. So uh, I'll start. How are you? How are you, Councillor? Are you well? I'm very well. How is Ramadan going? Ramadan's going really well. I'm taking full advantage of lockdown. I'm um, I'm staying awake through the night and getting a bit of a lying, I'm going to admit. Um, usually we have the children's school to worry about, so it's nice to not to have to rush in the morning. But it's a bit easier in that sense, and you're a bit hmm. more awake throughout the day than usual. I'm gonna, so it's good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah and I'm yeah. very fortunate to be living with my mom, so I get to see my mom every day. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. It's Alhamdulillah. Good that's, for me. that's very important. That's very important. Uh, the, the other gen my siblings, we can we can uh, see each other through WhatsApp and Zoom, whatever the other ways are. But with your mom, it's a bit more difficult with that generation. Mm. So of course, mm. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in a sense, Ramadan has been easier for all of us, hasn't it? Because yeah. of lockdown, it means yeah. we we don't have to rush around as much and, and do work and all yeah, this. Yeah. But of course, kids are at home. Yeah. We have to uh, <laughs> we have to cook lunch for them and yeah. have to worry about their education and things like that. Which after lies, we, we were talking in my show earlier, actually at uh, at four thirty, how it's given an opportunity for families to actually get to know each other, 100%. which is a which is a weird thing to say, really. 100%. But but you you don't have the time generally yeah. when you're running around, don't you? Yeah, life and of seems to have slowed down for me a bit, mm. which is nice. Yeah, um, and of course I was just going to say you're a working mother. Yeah. I mean, you, you're a pharmacist, mashallah, and at the same time a local councillor, and at the same time a mother of four. Is it? Four children. Mashallah, yeah. mashallah. Yeah. So, so uh, life must be busy it at is. the best of times it for is. yourself. But, but alhamdulillah, you adjust, you adjust, and, and you get used to that pace. Mm. So in a way, it has been nice to slow down. Um, mm. My youngest uh, daughter, she's uh, five years old. Last time I came on the show, I said she was six, and she corrected me when I got home, so I better get that right now. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Her birthday's in July, bless her, but she's five years old. She runs the house, as you can probably tell mm. from that. Um, and, and every day, because our routine's changed and it's revolving around school and mm. doing everything together, uh, she's, she's, if we suddenly do something without the family, she'll stop me and say, Mama, are we not doing this as a family? <laughs> Can we not have family time? And, and Alhamdulillah, it's given us time to get that into our routine, mm. and the children understand how important it is. Oh, that's you know, you have to look for a silver lining in every, in every, uh, uh, everywhere you are. So mm. now, now, you've been in the council for um, a couple of years now, haven't you? Yeah, two years. How how have you found these first two years? Um, it was very challenging at first. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm naturally a very shy person. Um, speaking up publicly was very difficult for me. Uh, and as a councillor, you're expected to make a comment on things. You're expected to give feedback, and you're expected to stand up and be the one to represent the community. Um, and which is fine, and but obviously because if, uh, in my day-to-day -day role, I've never done anything like this, so mm. it, adjusting to that was difficult. But I went out there and I, th I got some training. Um, well, I knew it, it was something that I needed to develop myself, so I did that. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I've managed to get a bit more confident and, uh, and with the support of the community, and with, the with the people who are good speakers like yourself, for the use of, um, you know, you learn from people. Mm. I know, it's getting mm. easier. I'm yeah. enjoying it more now, so that's that's, that's good. You, you're being very kind. I think disingenuous <laughs> if you've learned anything from me. <laughs> but uh, but Jazakallah for that anyway. I would say one of the things which I've really valued in having you as a councillor within Wolverhampton, um, and this is irrespective of any party politics, I think, I is the fact that, number one, you're Muslim, and number two, that you're a female, you're a, a Muslim sister. Um, I think that's the opportunity for our girls, really, to look upon you and think, yes, we can do something, we can achieve. And, you know, it's a, I it's a role which is mm. city-wide, which, which, which gives you a sense of responsibility. Um, but, I mean, have you found that young Muslim girls are coming to you and saying, how did you do it, and we want to join? Um, not so much that they want to join so far, um, but this is one of my goals as a councillor. And I want to look back through my political career and look back and think that, yeah, I inspired young women to come forward and take it, and I made it easier for them. And if I can be able to say that in a few years' time, I think I've achieved what I need to. I, I think I'm finding that more women are wanting to participate in, in, in the activities that we're doing. They're, they're turning up to meetings, and, and, and I think it's part of my role now to make it easier for them, make it easier for them to come along and, and make them not just, uh, you know, uh, it seems to be like an afterthought that the sisters are invited to these things. I think it needs to mm -hmm. be make you need, need to make sure that they're there full on from from day one and mm. their voice is heard. 
Mm. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to do that. And, and, and just to widen that, um, that whole concept of being involved in civic society, I suppose. I mean, I, I, we want to always encourage our youth to get involved in, in careers mm. within, for example, local government. Um, and we find that Muslim, for whatever reason, I'm quite unsure myself, for whatever reason, Muslims are underrepresented. For example, if you were to go into the civic center and see the number of staff and officers who are working there. Uh, a number of other communities are represented quite well, but the Muslim community isn't. Uh, feel free to jump in, Kasser, yeah. if you wish to on that as well. And of course yourself, Avina, as well. Um, how do you think, you know, being role models now that both mm -hmm. of you are, you know, within uh, hopefully becoming councillors, how can you see a development whereby Muslim youth can think, well, you know, I, I want to actually aspire towards working in the civic centre. Whether they become councillors is, di is different. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, as you said, you know, ex exactly, um, especially in council, we, we, I mean, uh, we notice uh, as ourselves and councillor Abay, them, there is a lack of representation from Muslim community in a sense. And um, I think with us working with those, uh, especially the youth, and some of the problems that we have within the community. Uh, it's just one of those opportunities that there's no lack of talent. I think once they've give, been provided the platform where they can express themselves exactly, and we need to understand the problems, because there may be genuine issues within those youths, why, why there's a lack of education, if there's a family problems, uh, there's a school problem, why do they not want to go to school, or whichever, whatever the reason is, or any other issues, drugs related or whatever. So we need to work with those youths and uh, bring them on uh, within the council or uh, other careers. So, so okay, and and debate with regards to the women as well. Yeah, well, I think there's a number of issues here really why there isn't the uh, equal representation. And one is that the fact that the, the children need the youngsters need positive role models. You can't, you know, that's one big factor in any aspect of our life. We all need that role model to look up to. And and uh, hopefully having myself and brother Gesser and and brother Gansa Khan as well. The, our younger youth will start to think there is other options out there. And I'm going to be honest here. I I myself come from an, uh, a family where I was taught from day one that you're going to be a doctor and you're going to go down the science route. And that was what I did because I didn't know anything else outside of that. And it's uh, not until I've got to the point where I've become a counsellor myself, where I've, and I suppose this COVID situation does help, where I've sat my children down and said, well, look, we need to seriously think about careers now. I don't want my children to be doctors. I'll be completely honest. I want them to look out there and see there's so many other jobs. Mm. And, and we need, as a Muslim community, to get into every single field. And that is the only way we will make a difference. And that is the only way that our opinion will be heard. And I think that's about making those changes from now, having the opportunities and, and, and showing our youth yeah. that there are other options yeah. out there. And then it's part for uh, uh, us as counsellors to yeah. show them the way that you know these are the opportunities. Work with the mosque, work with the, with the schools, yeah. go out there and find them. So, so there is. Sorry, Kasa, go on. No, I was just going to add. Uh, <coughs> I mean, just a personal example. Um, uh, industrial Community Centre, uh, late uh, Uncle Kazi, they used to run uh, one of the uh, youth projects where young people used to <coughs> come. And I mean, initially, I worked with uh, with them at the time. And uh, what we found out initially, there was like five or ten students. I mean, uh, young people used to turn up. And um, but slowly, you know, expanding on that, you know, to bringing in badminton, indoor cricket. Um, other activities, you know, because they within their community, within the young people, they talk with each other. And so one, once they find a place where they can turn up, so there we basically find out exactly what the problems were when we try to you know, tackle those issues. But unfortunately, because of the austerity and some of the other uh, uh, cuts. cuts that we find out through council or through central government, um, so these were all programs that were stopped. So I think. We once we have the opportunity to start them back on and to listen, because I believe if you're not going to make that investment in those kind of services, you will pay from somewhere else, be it issued through police or um, the council or any other. So they'll pay, but maybe in a different way. So we need to make those right sort of investments where young people can express themselves, where the community can find out what the problems are. So that's how the community can excel further. Of course, of course, yeah. And and we've got, um, I mean, there was projects set up at Dunstall Community Centre, but also TLC, for example, yeah. do a, a lot of yeah. good work within the community. And the Masajid also do a lot of good work with, yeah. with working with young people and, and trying to get them to focus on self-development and, and things like that. So coming back to you guys as role models, though, and, and, for example, looking at careers within local government or looking at roles as politicians within local government, 
do you think, I mean, we, we've, there's a recognized education attainment gap. So do you think we could actually get some investment from local government, from, from the civic center, to say, how can we encourage careers fairs, for example, at the mosques? Or we could <coughs> encourage maybe young people coming into the civic center and having an afternoon or a, a day of shadowing and seeing some of the careers. So maybe year, year 11, year 12 students could come in from local schools um, and, and take part in or, 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 or have a chat with some of the council offices, whether it be in environmental health, whether it be in education or social services or within housing or, or any other of the different departments. And, and through that actually get those young people motivated and inspired yeah. so that they could. Is that something you guys would want to lead on, for example? I think that's a brilliant idea. That's, great. that's a really good idea. It, and, uh, and it's very easy to do. I think bringing in the yeah. the to the careers team into the madrasa, getting that's the perfect yeah. age we need to be hitting. Really, it's a great opportunity for the to bring the two together. Yeah, exactly. I think it would work yeah, really yeah, well. It's a yeah. Okay, we're going to go into a break now, so uh, we shall see you straight after. <laughs> Okay, Bismillah. Welcome back. Yes, you're listening to Ramadan Radio, Wolverhampton. I'm Alvina Ali. And I'm joined by my co-host, Yusuf Shafi, in conversation with, we have St. Peter's Ward Councillor, Abeda Ahmed, and our Labour candidate, um, Kesar Azim, as well. Um, Kesar, I want to ask you a couple of questions first myself as well, just okay. to start. So what got you into politics in the first place? Yeah, um, I think it's quite simple. Um, the question should be, uh, I was already in the politics in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier on, from quite a young age, I went to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of my family, uh, immediate family, were uh, here in UK. Uh, in Pakistan, I had an uh, opportunity to interact with some of my uncles. Uh, and they were quite into politics. Um, and in especially in Azad Kashmir, they were uh, went up to the uh, being a health minister and uh, education minister. So I've seen them from a very young age, mm -hmm. the stuff that they've been doing. And uh, one of the things that inspired me, and it was um, my uncle, I think, uh, the, the work that he's done. I mean, may I arrest him in Jannah. He's passed oh away now. Mm -hmm. But you know, the some of the work that he's done, mm. uh, in especially in our area, in the whole region, uh, it speaks for itself. Um, some schools, health centers, and people remember him. And you know, when you look at that, uh, some of the stories that they share with you, that how he helped them in certain certain situation, be it being a job or, or a health center or any other health, and especially in a place like the Art Kashmir. So it inspired me from very young age to be able to in a position where I can make a difference, because uh, I believe. Professionally, my career, uh, I've been working with electronics engineering and uh, mashallah, I'm doing very well and this community has given me and uh, support and what I need during those years. But I need to, I feel that I need to give back some back to the community and being part of the, um, being part of that uh, journey in a sense where I can make a difference with be uh, one person and that would be great for me. So that brought me into politics in a sense and Good, okay. okay. Um, obviously, uh, you being the local election um, candidate, yeah. um, obviously you're um, canvassing, all that's mm. gone out the window because of mm. COVID-19. Um, was there anything particular that you was preparing for um, that you could let our listeners know in advance? Yeah, I mean, we were, as Councillor Bay, they're sitting here, uh, <coughs> we went through our selection meetings and uh, um, all our community members, they, they took part in, in all those meetings. Mm. And uh, just when we announced our uh, campaign launch, uh, mm. I think the uh, following week uh, it was announced the uh, lockdown. Yeah. Um, we had a fantastic launch, though. Yeah. Oh, did you? <laughs> Mashallah, we had a really good uh, m uh, response from some of the community members. And wow. uh, I mean, it was industrial community center and w all the hall was full. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just uh, when you look at that support. It just means guests has to do it all again. Yeah. yeah it's you good practice though, isn't it? <laughs> 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 yeah. you, you've done the trial then. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, mashallah, I mean, uh, I would not name some people within the community, but mm. um, every single person who knows who, who, who I'm mentioning, um, they've been sport from r right from day one. Uh, but being... Um, and as a candidate who's been shortlisted and then through our mm. uh, selection meetings. So the encouragement I've received from some of the community members, I can just thank them 
for what, what they've been doing him. And um, certainly, if I do get selected um, next year, mm. when, when the elections will happen, I think uh, going forward, that's the sport I will need because uh, those community members got the experience. So mm -hmm. maybe we need advice and guidance from them yeah. and we can take that forward and working with the councillor Beda and other councillors so we can make those projects happen because mm. uh, as I said earlier on uh, St. Peter's most deprived wood and we need to make the change why why is it the most deprived wood so we need to find those uh, answers and try to work towards the solutions okay so okay. You, you probably put some leaflets together yeah so what details do you actually put on your leaflets in which direction you're going just for the sake of our listeners yeah we would just just highlight uh, some of the issues within the community so we like highlight them mm. and then there's contact details with myself and some of the other councillors so they can get in touch with them uh, so it's basically building that relationship with the, with our uh, constituents mm. and uh, uh, so we actually hadn't got to the point where we got our leaflets printed. Oh, you did until no, we, we were at the point where we had the the, the general labour council kind of uh, what the rec labour the council's done. Mm. So we were still at that point. So we're going to start afresh soon, inshallah. Lovely, lovely. Okay. 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 Can I just d jump in? Then? Yeah, of course you can. I guess it's quite new to all of this, but in the background, I, I know guys have well, we've, our families have grown up together, but mm. he's a very passionate person, mashallah. He's very dedicated to the area, and I look forward to working with him. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> we need our own to come up and, and take yeah. this position. So and I, yeah. uh, with him, I was just thinking that's that's one vote you've got. <laughs> 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 I'm sure I can yeah. bend my husband's arm as well. <laughs> that's two. We're doing well here. Yeah. We're doing well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I mean, I, if I could just add to that, I mean, uh, some of the brothers, um, uh, I just want to thank them. Because, uh, you know, when you talk about talent, yes, um, obviously they're supporting me into this role. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, those brothers, they were more than capable of being a candidate and being leading yeah. for, for our fu future uh, councillors. So I just want to thank them. Uh, and so if mm -hmm. I don't want to mention uh, them, but I think no, they, they know who fine. they are. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure when you get into the role and you realise the sacrifices and time you have to put in, you <laughs> yeah. won't thank them after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Gesser, so what do you see that voters want happening in the mm. St. Peter's Ward? And why did you select to be within St. Peter's Ward as well? Yeah. I think one of for myself, uh, it, it's a bit easy in a sense that I live in, in Ward. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen over the years... Uh, how the ward was, yeah, you know the problems and some of the how he has changed over the years, mm -hmm. and you know some of the sp uh, things that maybe they were better before and they've gone to a worse level. So we need to work w where the problem is and w how we can uh, channel those funding towards the problems mm -hmm. uh, and work with the community. So it's it, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, past couple of years with Sister Ray there and other councillors, Council Soil, um, in, in other ward. Uh, so all these people can bring that talent together and basically work towards the community because mm. at the end of the day, we d we all are one. We may be from a different party, but I think our goal should be one for what oh betterment right. for mm. our community. Course, yeah. And what yes. I would just add to that is that although St. Peter's has its share of problems, one thing I would notice about St. Peter's when I look at other wards is that we've definitely got a strong community yeah. atmosphere mm. here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. That we need to pull together, we all pull together and you know we pool our resources. Mm. And I think... The, the issues that we've got, they're going to take a long time. They're, they've been there for generations. Yeah. Mm. We've been left behind. Let's mm -hmm. not deny that. Mm. It's going to take time. And we need to work together uh, with the resources that are there, pull them together and, and bring our community to, to tackle them together. That's mm -hmm. the only way we're going to do it. Yeah. That means bringing the masjids together, bringing the schools together. You're going to have a job council. bringing the masjids <laughs> together. <laughs> 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 no, they, when they need to step up, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's about making that easier for them. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, um, with regards to Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton, 87.9 FM, I mean, in a sense, this is a, a voice which we are now trying to provide for the Muslim community within the city of Wolverhampton. Uh, and it's a. I was touched by the the point you made about um, working alongside Councillor Sohail because I, I've I known Councillor Sohail for many years, and Mashallah, he does a, a lot of good work yeah. for Wolverhampton generally, generally yeah. across the board, not just for within his ward in in Tetnal. Um and that is really, I think, the essence of where we need to be as a community. It yeah. isn't about party politics, actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of the policies that may be at national level with regards to Labour or Conservative uh, don't apply at local levels. Yeah. The issues which affect local politics are totally different. And so working alongside all masajid, working alongside all communities, and all the different li Liberal, Conservative, Green, Labour, focusing on the needs 
and developing individuals is is where really where we need to be. So I, I think I think uh, that will re- certainly resonate with a lot of people. What you said with yeah. regards to, um, I- you know, working alongside councillors, councillor Sohail. Um, inshallah, councillor Sohail will be coming on next week, and we'll have the opportunity to dis- discuss yeah. those things with him as well. Um, uh, moving forward, though, I think looking at how our community is deprived and looking how it is so underdeveloped. Um, I suppose I'm asking Councillor Obeda more so because she's obviously got the experience of being there for two years, but also yourself, Kesser. Mm-hmm. Will there be a sense of frustration when things aren't achieved? Because you were talking about your uncles in, in Kashmir and how they were involved with setting up hospitals and setting up schools. Uh, it's a totally different world there and yeah. there's totally different needs. But things aren't as simple in Wolverhampton. You can't just say, we'll click our fingers and set up a school. It doesn't work like that. How do you cope? So, Councillor Beda first, how do you cope with that frustration and, and dealing with that issue? It's difficult. I mean, the, the ex- there's a lot of expectation of from generally from our community, but you can understand it. There's, there's years of frustration behind it. and Everyone wants what's best for their genera- future generations and themselves. You can understand it. And for me, it's about making, facilitating things rather than saying, making false promises and standing saying, look, yeah, fine, I'll do that for you. And I think once people understand the situation, they understand that there's a, a process and we guide them through that and we support them. We don't just turn them away. I think then you get you build up the mm. relationship and people respect that more. And you've got a more of a chance of people <coughs> seeing that, okay, this is how far they can support me and this is what I need to do for myself. And, uh, and as long as we make those paths clear, I think that work is made easier. That's how I found it so far. I mean, uh, it's very early days for me in terms of yeah. uh, I'm learning myself every day. But it's about building those those relationships between the community and the council, if you like, or the whatever the work needs to be done. And that's our role. Yeah, just uh, expanding on that, I, I, I think um, there's there are limitations what a councillor can do. Uh, and the thing is that people need to understand because uh, there's only one vote or a council mm. c- has it. So they can work with the council and within the community, but at the end of the day, people need to understand that um, uh, they can take an issue, but uh, once that communication level within the council and the councillor, so they need to basically channel that um, uh, issue with the community and basically let them know that what exactly the f- issue is because uh, there's only certain level that a councillor can do. And so basically keeping that communication level open with it's the community. It, it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, sometimes yeah. it's difficult just to switch off from it as well because you'll come to situations when you think, well, if I, if my yeah. if I was living in a two-bedroom flat with my four children, what would I do? I'd mm. go mental in a day. I'm not going to lie. It's yeah. difficult. And yeah. if people are trying to bid for these houses, the houses aren't there. Mm. You feel responsible, even though it's yeah. not your fault. You want to help them, but you can't. Mm. And it, it is difficult. It's yeah. difficult to switch off from that. Then and then to face that person as well after and say, "Look, mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did what I could, but yeah. this is the situation." Mm. Mm. And uh, it is. I'm not going to lie. It is yeah. yeah. I got. I got a text message here. It says, um, "Beverly here. Just want to say hi to a better and guesser." She goes, Abeda is a great counsellor and guess her soon will be as well. And she goes on to say, both are really out to support the people of Wolverhampton and I'm so proud to work alongside Abeda. And that's from Councillor Beverly Momanabadi. Oh, thank you, Beverly. Thank, thank you. you. She's thank a great big shout out well. to uh, Beverly yeah. as well, yes. Definitely, thank 100%. So, moving on forward from that, in a sense, you've discussed the frustrations and, and I think we really need to understand that the community have to take ownership then and encouraging that ownership. Let's widen our discussion, therefore, and talk about our masajid. And I know that's uh, a popular <laughs> topic, especially for Sister Alvino as well, <laughs> uh, in her recent comment about them. To be fair, what you've got there is um, people who are volunteers, people who give up their time and their money, in a personal sense, um, to do the work of deen. Mm. Their focus isn't, and to some extent maybe the argument is shouldn't be, uh, to provide social facilities. Their role is to actually work within the dean and to promote and support the people of Wolverhampton or people within their vicinity to support them with their, their Islamic development. But of course we live in a world where there is an expectation that they should be putting on martial arts. So we were discussing this last week, putting on martial arts programs and putting on education programs and supporting community with their social needs as well. How do you think we can actually create a, a marriage between the civic center, the local government, and these places of worship? How can you facilitate that? I think it's yeah. a, there has to be a want to do it from both sides. 
and and I think uh, you know it's, it's if we make it easier for the Muslims to get yeah. involved in these things, then 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 we can you know get the officers involved on the other side, and and that will be easier. But I think it's about getting the Muslims to realize the potential mm. what that they've got in in these yeah. huge buildings that they they own or they, they you know that they're running. It is difficult. You're right. I understand they're all volunteers, but there's a huge potential there. Huge potential. The way I see Muslims is is that they are big intergenerational centers. Mm. That you know they can provide support support for every level for our older generation for our youth. For you know, for the uh, people like myself in between, mm. um, <laughs> yeah. So there's a big potential there, um, but we need to make it easier in terms of if there is opportunities for funding, if there's uh, training courses available, mm. um, you know, all these kind of things. If there's a people who we think would be good role models for the for the youth, um, getting them involved, getting them down to the musha to do talks with the youth, doing workshops. That's where we come in. That's where we can mm. help. Yeah. And, I, and I, I suppose yeah. you mentioned funding. So mm. with regards to funding, obviously faith-based organizations can't receive funding. Mm. And being charities as faith organizations, they aren't able to uh, get access to that funding. So so are we saying we need to now further develop to create arms which are essentially non-religious, which can do social work, and then open that to wider community, non-Muslim and everybody else, but use those community buildings? I mean, I, I, was, I was speaking to one of our... Ulema, one of our Masjid committee, and it's not worth mentioning names now, but he was saying within Wolverhampton, the assets within the mosques are probably, from the point of view of buildings and, and asset ownership of those, it's probably in the region of about 50 million pounds or even 60 or 70 million pounds, if you just think about the buildings. Yeah. So you've got 60 or 70, 50 or 60 million pounds worth of assets sitting there, but not being used for community use. And of course, it's all been paid for by community. Yeah. It's, it's all the public funds that have gone into it. Um, so is is that where you can see local government and, and Masajid working together by actually creating uh, effectively third sector organisations out of them? That's one possible option, yeah. I think. Yeah, I the think uh, yeah, exactly as Sister Vela says, um, obviously a council comes in there where they can provide some of the um, support to the mosques and what exactly they need. But I think uh, another aspect we need to look into is the... Um, within the mosques itself, the m uh, different mosques where they can come together, where some of the aspects, maybe they've had a w experience of doing a certain thing in a certain way, where can they, they can share that knowledge with, with uh, other mosques. So we can bring that talent, because obviously all these people who are running mosques, they are um, volunteers, and they're giving up their time. So, uh, so basically bringing them together in a sense, and where can they can learn from each other, and where the council can come and provide the support in but so the masjids need to be able to develop with yeah. the times. I mean, yeah. when they were set up initially, the, the need for the community was different. Now we're at a different point. You know, mm. we're second, third generation. Yeah. Now our children need to, to yeah. be able to look at their masjids to get the support that they need, whatever part of their life they're going yeah. through. So I mean that's where we need to yeah. work on. Alhamdulillah, our elders, basically, they've built these big institutions for, mm. for our f generations to come. And I think um, s some of the younger generations, they, they are providing that support, but I think council in, in a place where can they can further enhance that support where obviously these volunteers if they need training in a sense or um, in, in on the youth side career talks or whatever so basically they can bring that in, into the community center because as you s mentioned earlier on uh, there the infrastructure is there the buildings are there we just need to bring people in to make use of those places mm. and and of course those people need support from community so yeah. so in a sense what we're saying to our youth who was listening out there is to say well join these committees get yeah. involved yeah volunteer at the mosque and and over time you will find that you will be more influential and your voice will be heard yeah. and then if there was, I mean it's a, it's a crying shame but unfortunately the masjids are used for juma for a couple of hours yeah and for two eats exactly the rest of the time we have got one saf if that yeah and yeah. for vast periods of the day, the building isn't being utilized. And, yeah. you know, often the heating will go off, but even if it's on, you know, it's it's wasted yeah. from that point of view. So if you were to look at just simple room utilization, utilization you know, you've got about 10% of the time being used. 90% yeah. those buildings are, are wasted. Yeah. Um, and, and that is a, a crying shame. We yeah. need to focus as a community and say, how can we actually put these back into public use for... for and I, yeah. I, I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm calling upon both of you as one prospective and the other one as a sitting councillor to say um, let's have some campaign and focus on this let's actually mm. get public to actually raise alarm about this uh, is that something you would would resonate with you yeah totally I mean I, I agree with yourself uh, 
basically highlighting them more within the community itself so we can bring it forward that these places are there we need to make use of these places and um, uh, and a lot of these i mean crime i mean we've seen uh, in front of ourselves uh, um, some of the youth that are maybe up to no good but because uh, they are within ourselves and we, we, we know the people around who, who exactly they are and for whatever reason people d don't talk about it but we need to be up front and basically talking about these issues so that's the only way th we're going to solve them yeah there's uh, definitely huge potential as far as yeah. all the mustards are concerned and, and I would love to work with all of the mustards to, to help be that with the sisters with the brothers everyone I would love to, to take that lead and do that inshallah inshallah inshallah, inshallah. Okay, better. You're a, a a great Corbyn fan, aren't you? Oh, I am. I so, am. how did you feel like when he <laughs> stepped down? I was gutted. I'm I'm still gutted if I'm honest. But mm -hmm. you know, th this is politics, and we move on. We yeah. move on, and we got to do the best with the, with the new leader now. And, do, and it's about mm. the position you want to take in that I in the way the party takes. And, and I think for me, it's about remembering why I joined and sticking mm. to my principles. And, and as long as I can do that, I will stay and do what I need to do. So you met up with him quite a few times, didn't you? <laughs> I took a photo with him a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, so, so what's he like generally as a, as a person? I don't know. I d uh, he seems like a really nice person. Oh, so you never like, like No, physically? never had a conversation oh, with him. Oh, right. No. Just, okay. just a selfie here and there, I'm afraid, that's all. But yeah, he seems like a lovely person. Mm. I mean, if you look back at his career, he's always had really good values. He's always st st sp mm. spoken up for the Palestinians. That was one of the biggest attractions for me. Mm -hmm. um, he, in fact, in general, anyone who's been you know deprived or who's been uh, who's been attacked or you know the vulnerable in our society, he's always spoken up for them, and that was one of the main attractions for me. Mm. Got a lot of respect for him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, if people want to get in contact with you both, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? I have my surgeries once a month, which are at the moment on hold. But if you go onto the council website, you can get details from my council number, my email. Email is probably the best, mm. if I'm honest, but uh, it's just abeda.ahmed at wolverhampton.gov.uk. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, I suppose it's... Uh, how, how long have we got left, Albina? Five minutes. Five minutes. So re really, I suppose it's opportunity for us to summarize some key yeah. things. And, mm -hmm. and we've had the pleasure of your company, Kesser, and uh, Council of Ada. Uh, and I'm sure listeners will have appreciated the sense of empathy that you both have shown and that you show. Uh, I also think listeners would very much appreciate the uh, honesty with which you've come across um, and been able to actually talk about a lot of the issues and concerns that face them in their daily life. Um, so what we would want to do now is in these last few minutes of the show, I think really just to have you especially guess it as, as the prospective candidate. Uh, to to send out some key messages of where you think the focus wants to you want the focus that you want for your ca your campaign, uh, and if you were to be elected, uh, what would be your main priorities for St Peter's Ward? Uh, <coughs> yeah, as I mentioned earlier on, um, I'm part of the community. I've been raised here. Uh, people have seen me in, in different roles uh, as working within the community itself. Our mosques. I've been uh, involved within our mosque koala. So basically, they know exactly how, um, as a person I am uh, within our, our party and gen public, uh, uh, in a sense. So I think uh, going forward within our campaign, I think we need, to, um, uh, we need to play a campaign where we listen to other per person and take, take, the, um, take the issues, whatever the issues it may be. Because uh, as long as we work within, within our community, different parts of the community together, uh, I believe we can achieve whatever goals that we have. You know, we, we were talking about these um, St. Peter's being most deprived world. Um, unless there's a motivation there with, with different parts of the community together, uh, I'll work with uh, some of our councillors uh, taking those issue, issues up and... Hopefully, we'll, there'll be a strong voice within um, the council itself, whether it be f uh, fighting for those fundings for whatever projects th that'll be coming towards uh, St. Peter's, because there have been difficult time for the past couple of years when some of the issues where uh, we felt that St. Peter's were, was being not listened to on some of the issues. And we need to make St. Peter's voice heard, because there's a lot of frustration within our communities, mm -hmm. with, within St. Peter's itself, and um, it shouldn't be like that. This is an inner city ward, and it's, it's connected within the, city, within the city center. So there should be more funding, I believe, if you, and not talking about other wards. There are different priorities for each ward. Mm -hmm. So I think St. Peter's should be uh, looked as standalone, you know, ward itself. What are its issues? Why is it 
deprived because I was looking at uh, some of the figures on d- deprivation and I think uh, from 1 to 20 St. Peter's on, on fourth deprived the uh, fourth number mm. the most deprived so I think th- there must be reasons why why exactly that it, it's the way it is so we need to be working with our counsellors uh, our council leader and in a sense um, within all the communities and basically taking that message forward um, my door's going to be open with o- all our members of the community and uh, I'll, I'll listen to them and I'll take their views forward and um, hopefully inshallah with some of the councillors if I do get elected um, uh, work with some all the councillors. That's excellent and and yourself councillor Bader any departing messages? For me it's about upskilling our community whoever you know if whether, whether that be the youth or whether it be the sisters whether it be the elderly generation it's about giving us ourselves the potential we have the potential but giving ourselves the opportunities to do what we the best we can and i think that there's a, a role that everyone plays and as long as us as st peter's as a community we stand together and we support each other we'll be able to achieve more and i think as long as we can show that we're together with council khan speak up for our community the muslim community we will get there inshallah that's excellent uh, listeners, from myself, Yusuf Shafi, I'll say thank you for listening to Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton. Uh, next week, we will have Stuart Anderson, MP, and Councillor Sohail Khan, and we've mentioned him uh, today as well. So we will have both of those as our guests on uh, in conversation with the Alvin Ali Show. And uh, with that, I'll think the last few seconds of the show, I'll pass on to Sister Alvina. Thank you. I'd like to say a big thank you to Councillor Beda and to Gessa as well for joining us. Um, Got a text message here that says, uh, good show, but when you start a discussion on mustards, you should call the relevant people. We have spoken to the relevant people. But moving on, coming next now, we have got the breakfast show with Dr. Sheikh Asim uh, Yusuf. And that's all from In Conversation With. Until next time, we shall see you next week, like Brother Yusuf said, with uh, MP Stuart Anderson and Councillor Sahel Khan. So God bless and uh, catch you next week. <laughs>